What's up? This is Alex, DJ Couch King, and welcome to episode 3 of my music production course in Ableton Live. In the last episode, I went over how to use the built-in lessons, so if you're still watching this series, I assume you went through all the built-in lessons and you still want to know more, so congratulations, you are on a quest for knowledge. In this episode, I'm going to go over all of the preferences and settings in Ableton Live, and I'm going to try and do it in under 5 minutes. <laughs> All right, so for the remainder of this section of the video, there will not be any more edits or jump cuts. I'm going to try and actually do this in five minutes, not five minutes with editing. So um, I won't have time to talk about each setting in extreme detail. We'll go over more of those in later videos, but what I'm gonna do is kind of run through these real quick and just highlight the important things. So let's go ahead and start the timer. All right, let's start with the top one, look and feel. So this is basically where you will set things like the language that you want uh, Ableton Live to display everything in. For me, it's English, I'm gonna leave it as that. Um, you have other things like what it will the program do when you're playing back and it's following the playhead. Also, you can uh, change the track and clip colors and you can change the theme. This is pretty cool. Uh, I like normally using the dark theme, but since I'm doing YouTube tutorials, I'm gonna leave it on the default one, just so people aren't confused when they see my videos. Uh, plugin windows, multiple plugin windows is an important one. Once you start using a lot of third-party plugins, compressors, equalizers, things like that, it's a little annoying uh, because by default this will be turned off and you'll want to have multiple plugins open. So I just go ahead and turn that on. Um, so let's move on to the audio page. This is pr probably the most important page you need to familiarize yourself with uh, if you're setting up for recording or even if you just want to be able to hear coming out of your audio interface, this is where you set that up. So the uh, driver type for Mac is going to be Core Audio, for Windows is going to be ASIO or ASIO if you have an interface. If you don't, don't mess with it. Wait till you get an interface. Um, you can set where the input's coming from, where the output's going to, and then you can configure whether or not you would like them in mono or stereo. And I believe you can name them also now in Live 10, which is pretty awesome. Yep, you can name them, awesome. So, um, the sample rate, we'll go more in depth into this uh, when we just get start getting into audio recording and editing basics later on in this series. But for the most part, 44,100 should be fine for uh, most applications. That's still kind of the standard for mixing and mastering in 2018. And default sample rate, pitch and conversion, just leave high quality on. Um, this is if you're bringing in samples or sounds that aren't at this sample rate, it's going to convert them. The buffer size, this is another important one. The higher this number, the easier it is on your CPU, um, but the, the more lag you'll experience. So it's kind of a trade-off. If you're trying to play things live and you're experiencing some lag on your keys or something like that, you can lower this number at the expense of more CPU usage. Driver error compensation, uh, this is basically if your latency is not lining up correctly because of your drivers, but for the most part, I really haven't had to use this and find that for most applications, using the core audio drivers or the ASIO drivers is enough. Test tone, pretty self-explanatory. You can use that to just um, uh, make sure you're getting sound out of your speakers. So we're at three minutes, so let's move on. Link in MIDI. This uh, link is pretty awesome. If you have multiple computers set up on a Wi-Fi network, you can synchronize them all using that. Uh, if you have MIDI controllers, you will set them up here in the MIDI window. And if uh, when you want to start doing things like MIDI mapping and setting up control services, that will be in this section down here. Again, we'll go over all that in more depth once we get to the MIDI portion of the program. File folder, this is where you are telling Ableton where you'd like to, to do things like record audio files or store caches and um, tell it where to find your plugins. Uh, this is gonna be really important if you're a Windows user. When you install the plugins, you need to keep track of where they are and tell live in this window where you put them. 
Uh, all right, let's go into library. This is all about your user library where you're storing your presets, your packs, things like that. So if you have an external hard drive or a secondary hard drive in your computer and you don't want to eat up all the space on your system drive, you can come in here and tell it where you are keeping your user library and where you're keeping your packs. Record, warp, and launch. This is a really important window to familiarize yourself with. File type, AIFF and WAVE, these are both lossless file types, uh, but I would keep it on WAVE so that your recordings are pretty much compatible across the board. Bit depth 24, again, you can leave that there. That's pretty much the standard uh, for audio mastering in 2018. The count in, you can actually change this up in the top left, uh, but you can change it here for some other reason. Um, uh, multiple places, I don't know. Warp and fades. Uh, we'll go over warping again in a later video, but uh, I, leave, I like to just leave all the auto warping off so that it doesn't mess with samples when I'm dropping them in. Uh, we're running real short on time here, so your launch modes we'll go over when we talk about the session view, but again, that is uh, th this is important if you're going to be using this for live performance or DJing. And then license or maintenance. That is just going to uh, show you your updates and things like that. I'm not going to click on that because it'll show my serial number and I don't want that on Ableton. Okay, how do we do? Five minutes and 10 seconds. Oh, God, we were close. So close. But I think that's pretty good, right? Um, if you have any questions about any of these or I kind of breezed over anything too quickly, let me know in the comments and I will get back to you and be happy to go into more in-depth of an explanation. Thank you for checking this video out. If you like this video and you learned something from it, make sure to hit the like button, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell so that you can get the rest of the videos in this series right as they're coming out. If you'd like to support the channel, I've put links to all the gear that I use in my studio in the description below. Those are Amazon affiliate links, and if you decide to buy some of that gear for yourself, then I will get a small commission on the sale. I'll also have these DJ Couch King t-shirts available on my website for purchase soon, so keep an eye out for that, and stay tuned for episode four coming out real soon.